In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and talk about scanning and enumeration. Now, when it comes to scanning and enumeration, on the previous one that we had talked about before with the recon, we had started that off by trying to get some IP addresses and get some subnets. Now, in this particular case, the, re the scanning part is where we take advantage of the information that we got from the recon phase. So the different things such as the subnets and uh, IP addresses that we can actually start scanning on the machine, but it becomes active at this point because we're now sending packets to actual you know machines so i'll give a little disclaimer here at the beginning the things that we're talking about and doing here in this lesson they're going to be illegal unless you have permission so do not scan machines that you do not have permission for because that is not good <laughs> all right now into scanning we're going to talk about a variety of different ways that you can do things, but one of the very first ones we're going to talk about is something called vulnerability scanning. And there's a few different tools out there that do this job very well. There's some free uh, uh, products and there's some paid products as well. We're going to focus on one in particular for this one called Nessus because it is a uh, industry standard. There are other ones out there that um, have an open source mentality like OpenVaz, which is kind of, I believe, off based off of Nessus 2, if I'm not mistaken. And then you have one that's specifically geared toward Microsoft, which is MBSA, so the Microsoft Baseline Security Analyzer. That one's just for Microsoft products. And uh, there's other paid ones, too, as well, like Core Impact and other penetration testing tools that can do the same thing. But we're going to focus on Nessus in this one, and we're going to do a little demonstration of a scan against an XP machine. And some people will say, well, wait a minute. What do you mean XP? We don't really use XP anymore. Well, <laughs> recently I saw an article about the United States Navy paying $30 million to continue support for XP. So there's plenty of big box companies out there that are still using XP. And for this demonstration, it's to demonstrate a particular uh, exploit. And we're going to show you how a scan can turn into an exploit as well. And uh, that will kind of give you a preview of what we can expect to see for the system hacking stuff that we're going to do in another module. So in this one here uh, th with Nessus, there is a paid version, which a lot of companies will get per year. There's a cloud version, but there's also a community version. And if you go to your tenable.com slash products slash Nessus slash select your operating system, okay, you will find that there is a version out there called Nessus Home. And you can download it. Notice how there's no buy button underneath it because this is just going to be used for home. Now, with Nessus, it comes with a, with a whole ton of different plugins that make it pretty awesome. And if you get in the home version, be aware that you're not going to get all the plugins, right? I mean, you get what you pay for in this case here. Now, some of the other ones will have more reporting features. Some of them will have the ability to have all the plugins, that sort of thing. Uh, so depending on your needs, for us today, we're going to deal with just the Nessus home. So if you were going to download this, uh, let's say, for instance, for me, for uh, for instance, I had put it on my, uh, let's see here, I had put it on my Linux, my Kali Linux up here, and right there, and this one I had downloaded, if you're going to be getting the one for Kali Linux, here's what I suggest, that you're going to get the Debian version, and mine's a little bit old, but you'll see the same type. I'm gonna, I got the AMD64 uh, Debian format, and when you put it on it, like you have right here, the Nessus 6.2.1, the way that you would extract that is you would do dpkg-i and then the name of the file. So this, this whole deb file right here, okay? That will then extract it and uh, start the install and all that kind of stuff. So if you are going to do it that route, you can do it there. Or you can do it on Windows, whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, once you've done that, you will then run this etc slash init.d slash nessusd start to start the Nessus daemon. And for me, on my Kali, I replaced the Ice Weasel with Firefox. But for you, if you're just doing basic Kali, uh, you would have Ice Weasel. But for me, I put Firefox, and then I... Go to HTTPS colon slash slash and then your local host 127.001 colon 8834. Now I put this ampersand at the end because it's a neat little Linux trick that if I were to run this without the ampersand, it would take over control of this command prompt and I wouldn't be able to use this terminal for anything else. Uh, by doing the ampersand, it puts it in its own, you know, 
its own uh, process. So that's what you would run there. And after that gets run, then it will bring up Nessus. Now you'll have to create a login and get what they call an activation code. So you can get that at tenable.com slash products slash Nessus slash Nessus dash plugins. Uh, obtain an activation code. Now, I think it goes there automatically after you click on the download and do all your business there. But you're going to have to sign up, and then you'll have to get an activation code. And as you can see, the professional versions, a couple grand a year. So uh, that one there, you can scan unlimited IPs. With our home one, we only get 16 IPs and some limited plugins. So in this case here, Nessus Home Free, this is the one that you want. And then you would click here where it says Register Now, and that would get your activation code. After you have all that up and running and good to go, you then go ahead and see a login screen, and I've already logged into mine, but it will take probably quite a while to do all the plugins. So if you're if you're wondering why it's taking 20 minutes to do the whole install, it's because of all the plugins that it's downloaded. Um, so it does take a little while at the beginning when you're doing your first setup of it. Uh, but after you've done all that and you get to this main screen here, now you can actually start scanning and making your own scan. Now, mine, my plugins are a little bit out of date, but that's okay for this demo. So what we're basically going to be doing is we're going to be scanning this machine over here, an XP machine. And I'm doing that for a particular reason because of a uh, particular exploit that we can demonstrate fairly quickly without getting into a lot of the system hacking stuff. Because I want to save a lot of that for later for, for another module. Uh, so this would be a, just kind of a quick proof of concept, as it were. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to click on where it says New Scan. Now notice all the different plugins that you have. Now the things that are in purple, you can see it says Subscription. Those are what you don't get with, you know, the free version. But with the free version, you can see you get quite a few things. You get your advanced scans, you get your shell shock detection, basic network scan, host discovery, all that kind of cool stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do a basic network scan. I'll click on that. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time for it to come up. And again, there's a free version or an open source version called OpenVAS. And they do very similar stuff because I believe it's based off of the Nessus 2 engine. So under the name, just give it a name. I'll call it Chuck Scan. <laughs> for old Chuck Norris, do a little roundhouse kick scan. Uh, let's see. Then down here. You can pick a folder you want to put it in. I'll just keep it in the My Scans, but under the Targets is where you put in the addresses. So for me, my XP machine is 10.0.0.103, and we'll go ahead and run against that one there. I'll click Save. And you can see right here with the little green circle, it says Run In. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video for that to finish scanning, and then when we come back, we'll look at the results of the scan. All right, so the scan is done now. You can see a little check mark here that says completed, so we can click on this. It will then bring us up with our scan results. Now here we can see how many hosts we're rocking, and we see we got the 10.0.0.103, which is our XP machine over there. And you can see there's some critical, there's some high, medium, informational, or low, I'm sorry, and then informational. So we'll go over here to vulnerabilities, and you'll notice up here that it has a few that are critical such as the PHP unsupported device, administrative default passwords, XP so unsupported installation detection. Here's an interesting one, MS08067. If you ever watch any videos at all on YouTube or DEF CON conferences or anything, this is kind of the de facto because it's a pretty well-known and pretty reliable exploit for XP um, called MS08067. There's a few security bulletins out about it, but uh, that right there is the one we're going to focus on for a moment. So MS08067 is uh, what, we're, what we're looking at here. And if we click on it, it will give us a little bit more information about what it is, gives us a description, tells us our solution. In other words, update, get all the packs that you need for it and all that kind of stuff. Then as you scroll down here, you'll start seeing some risk information on the right-hand side. And then down a little further, we got some CVE details right down here. And then we got the open source vulnerability database section that will have all that information. And uh, here's the uh, Microsoft Security Bulletin article for it. So it's pretty much a well-known critical exploit. So let's take that, for example, and let's assume that we're going to go ahead and try to exploit this particular one here. Now, I'm going to use a particular one uh, or a service 
called Metasploit. I'm going to be talking about this in more detail in uh, the module about system hacking. But to use it in this version of Kali, you'll do the database start first, and then you'll have to start up Metasploit itself. And we're going to do this as a quick little demonstration. And again, I'm not going to go into great detail about what we're doing on this particular one because we're going to get more involved with this in the system hacking module that we're going to be doing. Uh, let's see. So we'll start that. But this tool here is a, a framework where you can run a variety of different exploits and payloads against systems. It's very popular. Uh, one of the top tools being used by good guys and bad guys alike. Um, so yeah, we got that started. Let me start the console here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of this MSO8067 exploit. And in this particular uh, framework that we're going to be using here called Metasploit, they have a large number of exploits that are already built into the tool itself, and it's maintained consistently every day with any new exploits that come out. It'll get uploaded and, and added to this particular project. And uh, the company Rapid7 is now basically in charge of all this, and they are continually updating this thing with all the different exploits. And the idea is that you find an exploit or, or weakness into a system, and they also include a, br a bunch of different payloads that you can use as well. Now, there's a default payload that you don't have to worry about setting, which we're not going to really worry about here, and it's what they call Meterpreter, and it's specific to this particular console. And Meterpreter is kind of a command line way to kind of pwn a system and do a variety of different things, such as disabling keyboards and taking screenshots from the webcam, all kinds of crazy things. So we'll see an example of that here in just a few minutes. Again, this is kind of a preview to get you guys pumped up and excited for the system hacking stuff that we're going to be doing later. Uh, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of different discussion about what we're doing here yet, and we'll get more in detail about that in another one. This is more of a proof of concept. So this console here comes up, and you can see listed down below here that there's quite a few exploits. Mine's a little bit out of date, but you can see there's quite a few exploits listed there. There's also some payloads as well included. So what we're going to do is we're going to search for anything to do with MS08 underscore 067. The reason why is because we saw it here, right? So back on here, we can see there's the MS08067 right there. So that's what we're actually looking for here. So we'll search for that, see if anything comes up. And lo and behold, there's an exploit. Okay. And there it says a ranking of great. So it tells me that that's a pretty highly likely that it's going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and use this exploit. Okay, and this one here, we have to actually, we're going to do something called show options. It's going to tell us what it needs. And again, I'm not going to go into detail here about all this stuff. We're going to do this fairly quickly. So here we'll see our host is uh, under current setting. It says that it's required, but there's nothing there. Okay, so that's what we need. That means remote host. In our case, the XP machine. So we'll set the our host to 10.0.0.103. And I think we're all good to go. And we'll just type in the word exploit. Let it do its thing. And there we go. Send in stage. This is send in something called a meterpreter prompt. And then from there, we can do a PS to see what processes are running to verify that we've actually broken into a Windows machine as well. It's a good way to do it. So in this case here, it looks like it's hung up a little bit on me. So give it a second. Do, do, do. All right, so we'll say PS. And this will show running processes that are on the machine that we've broken into. And this is where we'll verify. Now, my username over there is Ray on XP. And sometimes it does this. You'll have to do it a couple times. It's a little wonky. But it's all good. So we'll give it a second here for it to... I don't know why it's lagging out so bad. <clears throat> All right, so let's try it again. All right, so we can see here it says raise-xp right there. So we basically pwned it. And to verify, I can do a get UID, and it will tell me that I've actually broken it as NT authority. 
which is uh, pretty good to go. That's a lot higher than uh, administrator, so we liken that. So in this case, I didn't have to do any privilege escalation. I'm automatically as anti-authority, and uh, life is good. And then from there, you can run a variety of different things. I can take screenshots, for instance. So I can say screenshot. Take a screenshot of the machine itself. Take a look at it under places. Or not. <laughs> so you can see it's lagging out a little bit here up on the top. All right, looks like we're opening up back here in the background. All right, well, while that's opening up here, a lot of different things you can do this, and we're going to talk about some post-exploitation in another, another module to be more specific. But uh, this one here, you can do a variety of things like get shell access, for instance. Type in shell, and I can get command prompt and do pretty much whatever I need from there. Here's our screenshot. It looks like the screensaver's on. So you can look here at the screenshots, kind of coming up a little bit there in the background. But you guys can see that it's just basically a screenshot of XP. So we know now for sure that we have indeed broken into an XP machine, which is pretty awesome. And now that we have command prompt here, we can actually go ahead and say, like, that user, uh, pwned, give it a password, slash add, boom. Added myself as a user on the guy's machine now as pwned. Then I can go ahead and do something like net local group, administrators, take my guy pwned, add him to it, and life is good. Pop, 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 another server drop, loving life. A lot of things you can do with this bad boy here. Um, I can also go ahead and do a hash dump and get the credentials in their hash format right there. And then proceed to use John the Ripper to go ahead and crack the passwords and things. That's in a different module. We'll talk about more about how to do that stuff in another module. But you can see basically here I've got complete ownage of the machine, clear event logs, whatever I want to do. I basically own it. So we went from basic uh, scanning. Okay. So we're assuming that we've done our recon, right? So we did our recon. We found out this company is running this IP set of IP addresses or this subnet. We then went ahead and took that particular IP address that we that we had found out from our recon phase, and we input it into Nessus. We ran Nessus as a basic regular scan. It found there was quite a few critical vulnerabilities. We found one of them. We just took one of them. There was many of them that we could have tried to exploit, but we took one of them, and we decided to look up under a Metasploit to see how we can actually go ahead and utilize that to break into said machine. And from there, we got ownage of the machine, and uh, life is good. So that's pretty much how you do things from beginning to end, from doing a basic scan all the way on up through. Now, there are other scan types that you can use as well, such as the web scanners and things of that nature. And we'll go ahead and get into that a little bit into the next module. For this one, though, we're going to end it here, and then we'll go back into on our next video and uh, get into the second part of some scanning, and uh, we'll continue from there.